Hello, my name is Modrim and today I'm going to take a look at my Spellweaver build guide that uses daggers and bracers to assassinate targets with utmost precision. Exceptionally high mobility, burst damage and a hit and run playstyle are the most notable features of this build. Deadly elemental spells, homing mines that can be used through cover and an incredible tool to engage and disengage foes will make you one fearsome opponent. I will be going over attributes, trinkets, upgrading tips, skills, perks, the talent tree and additional tips at the end. This build allows you to burst down unsuspecting targets with a high variety of different spells and tools, focusing on close range engagements. Observing your foes to strike at the right time is the core principle of this build. We are a sharp, fast striking blade of pure elemental energy. We are given the choice of when to engage, disengage or pull enemies into devastating bursts of magic. But we can also utilize a stance to briefly tap into a ranged repertoire of elemental attacks with our bracers. First a quick look at attributes, but before we move on make sure to like, sub and comment to support my channel. We want a 2-1-1 split for our attributes, until we reach 60 attack. Anything above it is better spent on con or ACN to improve our survivability and skill damage. Due to the lack of a parry and block, I'm highly recommending tapping into some con early, at least until you get used to the hit and run playstyle. Next are trinkets. Physical damage is the most common throughout the whole game. Neglecting those resistances is almost never worth it. Your elemental resistances should be always matched to the respective zones, with fire being the most common and deadly early on. Some bosses can spell trouble if you do not match your trinkets, so make sure to do so if you happen to be stuck on something. Next a bit about upgrading gear. If you have seen my other Asterigos build guides, you can skip this part. Get your braces to plus 10 first. Your daggers should be your second priority with elemental engine tide being the next. I found fire to be the most useful and fun to play around with, but lightning and ice also serve its purpose. Trinkets should always be your least priority. They cost the same resources and will later cost additional star rate chunks which can be farmed, but are exceptionally rare. This will possibly lock you out of equipment upgrades early. You can find the farming guide for those materials on my channel with a second short one coming for slabs and pure stones. Now on to abilities. This build uses 5 spells regularly depending on the resistances of enemies you are facing. Those abilities are Ice Spike, Supernova, Magnetic Pool, Victory Rush and Storm Dance. Ice Spike summons a cone of ice in front of us that will explode and deal additional damage after a short delay. The AoE is rather small and this ability should be used whenever enemies are resistant to arcane damage. Supernova has a much larger AoE and deals massive damage to the primary target and reduces damage to anyone standing near it. The cast time is also a bit longer which lowers the potential DPS on bosses, but it is overall superior to Ice Spike whenever you fight larger pools of enemies. Magnetic Pool creates a cone of static energy in front of you, dealing large amounts of thunder damage to anyone in it after a short delay. This ability additionally pulls enemies towards you, stunning them briefly and giving you a short opening to combo other moves into it. Victory Rush should be used on enemies resistant to your current ability kit and in between your ice spikes and supernovas to cancel the recovery animations of both. You will also deal additional strikes to enemies lying on the ground, but that's mostly not necessary because of your high burst damage. And your last ability is Storm Dance. This one changes your braces regular attack to range version. It's practically the same as your regular attack just in a range variant. Use it whenever you cannot pull enemies with your magnetic pull. Perks are next. Quick recovery is a great perk for this build. Getting knocked down will result in more pain, but you also only need one dagger dodge to get away from enemies, which makes you ignore the SP penalty most of the time. Treasure Hunter is a must have on any build increasing the drop chance of rare items. Recklessness can be useful for when you are sure you know what you are doing. Running around with less health is not a smart idea, especially at the start, but you can absolutely destroy bosses with this perk if you get in at the right time. Homing Mines is essential for this build, the increase in detection range and automatic targeting is a much needed quality of life feature. Enemies will still be knocked prone because of the insane damage potential of this ability, so not having that knock up is not a big deal. Magic Scythe is a weird one. The charge playstyle of the Morph ability doesn't suit this build at all, but it can be used to combo into mines. The secondary strike you can get later is much more useful on the sky, but the baseline overhead sword strike is superior early on. Blowing stabs is just increased the flow of your moves, a great perk with no downsides. Rolling slash gives you more options to engage targets, this is never a bad thing with this toolkit. Next let's talk a bit about Relentless Strike. This one replaces your last dagger hit with a continuous flurry of blows. It sure does sound nice, especially for when you want to regenerate AP. 
but we should never stay this long in a fight. The finishing strike of a regular combo also deals a lot of HP and stagger damage. Relentless strike just doesn't suit this build at all. Next up the talent tree. Swift shadows is essential and should be picked up as the first ability. The dodge is our best defensive tool and will be used quite frequently. Next up is treasure hunter. Then fill out the inner passives next, followed by quick recovery and potentially recklessness. Spinning slash in the dagger tree is next, giving us a way to cancel our recovery animation of our dagger dash. This is desperately needed for this build. All other passives, perks and abilities should be picked up after you fill out your braces tree. Homing Mines is our first target, enabling our hit and run playstyle. Elemental Mines gives us a great tool early on to restore large amounts of AP with our mine hits, at least as long as we use the ice element. Get all abilities next followed by Magic Sky. Here is the complete tree with a skill path for your enjoyment. Now let's take a look at additional gameplay tips. Bait enemies with shields into mines to overcome their defenses. Most will come closer to you and ignore the candy on the floor, resulting in their demise. Use pillars and covers as indestructible shields. Planted mines will still be able to strike foes behind them. This is most likely not an intended interaction, so it might be patched later on. Stack mines on top of each other to burst down targets. Combine this with your abilities to get the most out of free openings. They are very cost efficient, so make sure to use them frequently. Recharging mana can be done through your lightning fast dagger attacks or your ice mine. Hitting a foe with it regenerates a huge amount of ability points over time after getting elemental mine. Also make sure to not neglect your regular dodge. It uses less stamina and allows you to chain them back to back without recovery time. Your dagger dash is more of an engagement or disengagement tool. Anyway, I hope you found this video enjoyable. Make sure to like, sub and comment if you did to support my channel. See you next time and bye!